Since for hard techno might sound simple, but if you struggle with making them full like here, In this tutorial I will show you what effects do I use and what are my tricks for full as synths. This synth and the whole beat you have just heard comes from my newest hard techno template you can download from my website. It's a full track project with all sound design, arrangement and mixing already done so you can learn step by step how to produce hard techno. And for more heavy leads and synths check out my preset packs. Let's start with dropping Serum 2 onto the new MIDI channel. The synth from my track uses an arpeggiator. It's a MIDI effect that quickly creates melodic sequences. For an arpeggiator to work, I need to write a chord in the MIDI clip, or in other words, stack on top a few MIDI notes. Without the arpeggiator, the synth sounds like that. The arpeggiator, depending on its settings, will switch between the sounds coming from each stacked note. In a rhythmic pattern. In Serum 2, I turn on the ARP module and I start tweaking the melody with the pattern section. With shape setting, I choose the rhythm the arpeggiator will repeat. And the speed of that rhythm. I often find the 1 16th of a bar to work well. Tweaking other settings will result in a pattern not being perfectly in sync with the fold for kick pattern, so I usually skip that part. Once the pattern is set up, the transpose section lets you pitch that pattern up and down rhythmically. With shift, you can control by how many semitones a whole pattern is pitched up or down. With range, you tell how many times the pitch of a pattern will change. And the pitching rhythm is set with the same shapes we used a while ago. With these settings, my bass pattern is repeated three times. Each time, it's pitched up by 12 semitones in a simple up rhythm. This helps with making the arpeggiator sound even more interesting, but this time I want my beat to sound hypnotic, so I will keep the default settings. The next section is the playback, where I use mostly only two controls. The offset lets you start the bass pattern from a different moment, shifting the rhythm in time. The second option I like is the gate, that controls the duration of each note made virtually by an arpeggiator. I won't use the gate here, but I really love automating this knob sometimes. To change the melody, not only I can tweak the arpeggiator. After the first 4 bars, I play a slightly different MIDI clip, where the first two notes are pitched higher. The melody is finished, we can move on to shaping the sound itself, but before that, let me just say that if you want to learn music production fast without wasting time and looking for a right YouTube tutorial that might not even exist, visit my website to learn more about my private music production lessons, schedule a free consultation call, discuss the lessons with me and buy them with a discount. The sound itself will depend most on the waveforms we play through these oscillators. While Serum 2 offers three basic oscillators, one sub oscillator and one noise oscillator, for many sounds, including our amp, using only two basic oscillators is enough. For leads or arps that I know have to sound sharp and aggressive, I recommend using wavetables from the digital category. Your job is to find inside here a wavetable you like most and alter its tone with the wavetable position knob. <laughs> Each oscillator can be pitched up or down, but the first oscillator will keep its default pitch. After all, I already controlled the pitch of the sound by putting the nose in the midi clip in the right places. Another big thing to adjust in the oscillator is the unison section. It lets you to play through a single oscillator many of these waveforms, each with a slightly different pitch. This Serum 2 feature instantly makes synthesizers sound full. I'm going to play through the oscillator a 12 of such waveforms. I usually choose to play between 6 to 12 unison voices depending on how full I need the sound to be. Notice how smooth the sound got. That's not only because of the unison control itself, but also thanks to detune that tells the pitch difference between each of these 12 waveforms. The more detune you use, the more modulated the sound is. I usually set this up to around 1 o'clock. 
At last, the blend controls the volume of added unison voices. The snob becomes useful if that modulation you get from unison detune is too loud. To fine tune the sound coming from oscillator A, I will use another oscillator feature that is the warping. It lets you to morph any waveform using various warping modes that are also categorized. I don't need to reshape the sound. If I wanted that, I would rather pick a different wavetable, so here I will choose anything I like from the alt warp category. That on average slightly changes the sound. Pick the warping mode you like and use the knob to adjust the warping amount. More often than not, a single oscillator is not enough for a full sound. As I promised, I will use a second oscillator now. You can go through the same workflow I showed you earlier. That is, pick the wavetable, adjust the wavetable position, unisono and warping. At this point, when you are making your own presets, I think the main question is not what does the oscillator settings change, but how do I set up the second oscillator? Personally, I tackled that with two simple rules. At first, the second oscillator must support and fit the first one. This means that whenever I adjust the second oscillator, the first one plays in the background. I can even temporarily reduce its volume. The second rule is that oscillator B must be different from the oscillator A in at least two ways. It can use different wavetable and have a different pitch, or it can use different warping and have no unisono detune at all. I will show you an example. My ARP, because of unisono used, stopped sounding so sharp. So I will bring back some of the sharpness by not using the unisono section and the second oscillator. To make the synths fuller, I will make the second oscillator occupy different frequency range. To fine tune the synths, I use again warping and the second oscillator is adjusted. I set up their volume levels of course, Serum has a few more ways to further shape the sound. One of that ways is the filter section I will use on both oscillators for maximum impact. When you turn on the filter, all the oscillators you have added should be processed by it by default. If that's not the case, use these switches to route all active oscillators to the filter. Typically, you use here basic filter types, like a low pass filter, or a high pass one. But Serum also has filters that change the tone of the sound or simulate various effects. For example, I can use a filter that simulates either a phaser or a flanger effect. When I play the sound and sweep the cutoff knob in higher frequency areas, you will hear that familiar effect. To make that effect more intense, turn up the filter resonance knob. Depending on the filter type used, the drive knob can amplify the sound, adding bits of distortion and crunch that helps making synths more aggressive. At the same time, you should watch out for the synth volume that currently makes the matter read line. This doesn't give you much control over the sound and is generally undesired, so let's turn down the master volume knob to prevent that. Another knob that works different depending on the filter type used is the variable knob. In case of this filter type, the variable knob alters its shape slightly. The synth is almost ready for adding the effects. We already designed the tone of the sound as well as the melody, but the thing I don't like about that sound is the rhythm. I need it to sound plucky, not sustained. To make the ARP sound like a series of clicks, I will tweak now the first volume envelope that by default controls the volume of all serum oscillators. For a plug-like sound, grab this point and bring it down and close to the left. An alternative way to adjust the rhythm is using these five knobs, which is definitely more precise. This volume envelope section is universal to nearly all synthesizers, so if you'd like to learn more about it, watch this video where I show tricks for envelopes and whole synths in Vital, that is a freeware synth. The envelopes in Vital work in the exact same way as in Serum. To spice up the synths more, it's time to use some effects. In the effects tab, one of the effects you will want to use often is the OTT compressor. It's the kind of compression that simultaneously makes the high and low frequencies louder than the mid ones. 
It also compresses high and low frequencies more than mid frequencies, making it probably the best effect for beefing up synthesizers. But still, it doesn't mean you want to use this effect every time you use Serum. I've been using and explaining this effect through Alfley in another Serum tutorial where I make from scratch FM leads in style of Vortex, so here I will just show you the difference in sound before and after using OTT. If you've been watching the Vortex FM lead tutorial I suggested earlier, you could see I also used the distortion. This is exactly the effect we need now to make the ARP sound sharper and aggressive, while Serum has its own distortion effect. Through trying out different ones, I discovered that it's the vinyl distortion that gives the ARP the right edge. While also making the sound warmer, it generally simulates vinyl crackles, but as I have discovered, it works great on my synths. A vinyl distortion has two identical sections, and each of them distorts the sound different. To be more precise, the top section adds even harmonics to the sound, and the bottom one adds old ones. Regardless of what you find better to add, each section has the same controls. By adjusting the filters, cut off and bandwidth, you decide what frequency range is distorted. The slider next to the on off switch tells the distortion amount. So, if I want to emphasize the mid frequencies, at first I need to target them. And then I distort them to change the sound. The upper section is set up to emphasize higher frequencies. You can control the overall amount of distortion added by both modules with the drive. And tweak these settings that respectively shape the distortion and control the width of the sound. This ARP can get even more distortion. One of my tricks for arrangement is to add from time to time extra distortion that trashes the sound, and for that, the Ableton's amp is the effect I must show you. It's a guitar amplifier with several different modes. I start with choosing the one I like most. This will be typically something that adds lots of noise. Then I fine tune the character of distortion, starting with the distortion amount. and ending with this little EQ section. The volume knob with certain distortion styles fine tunes the distortion too. With output, you decide whether you keep the synth stereo or mono. I want the ARP to sound focused, so I keep the mono option. In the end, I blend the effect with dry wet, as I think there is too much noise now. Now look, after using the amp, I added an utility to turn down the amp output even more, and I grouped both effects. Whenever I want to spice up the arrangement, I create an automation and turn on the group for a second. To stop the synths from sounding dry, we must use some reverb. I usually split the reverb and dry synths into separate sounds to gain more control over them, and that's what I use the audio effect rack for. Inside of it, I create two processing chains. One of them is called dry, and the other one is called reverb, that's where I put the hybrid reverb effect. This effect creates and mixes two types of reverb, but to make your life easier, we can use this menu to use only the convolution reverb. This type of reverb uses small audio samples called impulse responses out of which the reverb is made. Make sure the dry wet here is set to 100%, because in the reverb processing chain we expect to hear only the reverb. Using this menu, choose the category of impulses and then the impulse itself. Plates and holes that create plate and hole reverb respectively are the most popular types of reverb for synths. Now we will fine tune that reverb. I start with size that changes the reverb sound most. Then I tweak the attack. To control the reverb lengths I use the decay. Around 4 seconds of reverb fits most synths. What's important for reverbs is the stereo width. Usually the reverb needs to be wider than the dry synths. Even if I turn down the stereo knob here. 
my reverb will be still wider than the tri synths. To control the width, you can also use the utility right after the reverb and tweak its width knob. In the end, experiment with pre-delay to improve the rhythm between the synth and the reverb. Or with feedback to add extra ringing effect. To blend the reverb with the synths now, don't use here the dry wet. The sounds are already split. Instead, tweak the volume faders in the audio effect track. What often improves the rhythm in your beat, especially when the reverbs are long and loud, is side-chaining the reverb to the dry synths. That makes the reverb quieter whenever the synth plays and once it stops the reverb comes on top. I use for that the envelope follower paired with another utility. I've already explained that trick step by step in one of my other tutorials so make sure you watch it, because in this video I will only show you the difference before and after using the envelope follower. Talking about side chain, you can also side chain the whole arp to the kick. This doesn't only add even more rhythm to the beat, but it also makes the kick cut through the mix so we can hear all its punch. To get that effect, after the whole audio effect track, I'm using another utility and shaper that is an adjustable LFO. This combination works just like plugins like LFO Tool or Kickstart Tool, so if you have any of these, feel free to use them instead. Equalization of this ARP is a bit different from what I'm used to do. I wanted that ARP to sound light. The beat in my track is crowded and full of sounds, so I had to remove lots of lower frequencies from the ARP to give remaining instruments space. That's why the first filter in the EQ that equalizes the whole ARP it's an aggressive high pass filter. Sometimes, especially once the amp with extra distortion kicks in, the ARP has too much of noise and sizzle that sits in the frequency range from 12k and higher. To make the ARP slightly dull, I use a low pass filter too. There is still some high and fast to be cut. To make the ARP sound clean, I should make a cut somewhere at 5 kHz. In my opinion, here is where most of that fast sits. All my remaining EQ filters mainly target this frequency range, but if you are just starting out, feel free to substitute that precise EQ shape with a single filter that can look like that. In the end, I decided to cut even more of that sizzle, so here's another filter targeting 11 kHz. And that's how finished ARP fits the track. Now if you wonder how to give your finished synths equally full and powerful kick drum, watch this video that will teach you making a toxic machinery style kick from scratch, so you can learn the most important skill of industrial techno producer.